What if I told you that there was a better way of computing a function value than the obvious way, being, in this case, uh, 4 times 5 to the 4th plus 5 times 5 to the 3rd plus 6 times 5 squared plus 7 times 5 plus 8. Would you believe me? Well, I certainly hope you would not believe me. And I hope that you're craving to hear the evidence because there is such a way to compute the value of a function in a lot fewer steps than the way we're doing it here. And we'll get to that, but let's first live out the stupidity in all of its fullness and let's compute this the obvious way. So 4 times 5 to the 4th. Uh, 5 squared is 25, so 5 to the 4th would be 25 squared, so 625. So 4 times 625 plus 5... Well, actually, this just turns out to be 5 to the 4th, right? So that's, again, uh, 625 plus 6 times 5 squared. Was, so 6 times 25 is 150 plus 35 plus 8. Now if we multiply that out, uh, 4 times 625 would have to be 2500, right? Plus, now maybe we could add these two together already, that would be 775. Plus, and that would be 43 here, so 43. Now let's add these all up together. These two together would be 818, I believe, so 3318, if I've added correctly. So, in order to see that this is not the most efficient way to calculate f of 5, let's take a closer, closer look at what it is we're actually doing. So, what we're actually doing when we're computing this in this way is saying 4 times 5. And I'm going to write these multiplication dots out and write all the 5's out so that we can see where we're multiplying and how many times we're multiplying. So 4 times 5 times 5 times 5, right, that's this here, plus 5 times, that's 5 to the third, right, yes, so 5 times 5 times 5, plus 6 times 5 times 5, right, that's 5 squared here, plus 7 times 5 plus 8. Okay, so what I want to know is how many operations am I actually having to do here? So additions I'm doing 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll just write that here. I'm doing 4 additions. And multiplications I'm 1, 2, 3, 4 the first time. All right, there's 4 of those. 1, 2, 3, 3 the second time. So this must be a pattern, right? So this is I'm multiplying twice there, once here, and zero times here. So 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, that gives us 10, so 10. We're doing 10 multiplications. So how could we reduce these 14 operations we're having to do here? Well, a common way of reducing the operations is just factoring something out, right? So if we had, let's say, ax plus bx plus cx plus dx, we could just factor out an x, giving us x times a plus b plus c plus d. And I'll write these multiplication dots in there again so we can see explicitly that we're multiplying here. So we had one, two, three, four. We had four multiplications here. And here we only have one multiplication. Now if we look at the additions, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, we see they didn't change, but at least we reduced the number of times we had to multiply. So now the question presents itself whether we could somehow use this principle to reduce the number of times we have to multiply to compute f of x. So let's see if we can do that. 
So f of x looks like this. Why don't we factor out an x? And we see, well, there's a problem. We can't factor out an x because x is not a part of this term. But maybe we could just leave that off, and we'll factor it out anyway. So that would be x to the third plus 5x squared plus 6x plus 7. And then we just have to add our 8 on to the end. Now if we look at this part here, again we see we could factor out an x where this 7 does not play a role. So we could just take another step, x times x times, we'd have 4x squared plus 5x plus 6. And we have to add our 7 in here, right, this plus 7, and then plus 8. And now we can look at this, of course, and we keep going. In the same pattern, x times x times x times 4x plus 5. And then we add in our 6 here. In parentheses and a plus, and a number, and a parentheses, and a plus, and a number. And now we see in our innermost parentheses we can't factor anything else out. So we have come to the end of the line. But let's see if we accomplished anything here. How many times are we having to add? One, two, three, four. So we've got four additions. And how many multiplications? We've got one, two, three, four. Four multiplications. Now let's compare that with how many we had before. We had ten multiplications. So we've more than halved of the number of multiplications. And if we look at that a little bit more generally, and instead of a 4 here, if we thought of this as being an n, it turns out that we have here n additions and n multiplications. Uh, I, I didn't prove that, of course, but it turns out that that is the case. This is not a coincidence. Our n was 4 and we got 4. It could have been a coincidence, but it's not. It turns out we're going to always going to need 4 uh, n. We're always going to need n additions and n multiplications using this method here. And using this method here, we will always need, this is just n, right? n additions. And if we see how this 10 came to be, we were just adding 0 plus 1, plus 2, and then all the way up to n. So as we know, the formula for adding numbers all the way up to n is just n times n plus 1 over 2, right? So that's the number of multiplications that we were actually doing. So our new method allows us to work with n additions and n multiplications. And our old method, so I'll say the new, or I'll, let's just say improved, the improved method gives us n additions and n multiplications. And the, I'll call it the obvious method. And by that, I just mean the way that we originally calculated the function value without thinking too much about it. We needed n additions and n times n plus 1 over 2 multiplications. So we've got a significant improvement in our new and improved method. And this improved method does have a name. It is called Horner's method sometimes called Horner's rule and sometimes it's called Horner the Horner scheme but as it turns out Horner who was a mathematician who lived in the 19th century did not 
invent this. He, he, well, he did invent it. He just wasn't the first to invent it. That was a mathematician, a Chinese mathematician, by the name of Quin Yushao. And I'm sure that I am pronouncing that incorrectly. But this Chinese mathematician invented this about 600 years before Horner did. But it is known today as Horner's method, and so let's take a look at what today is known as Horner's method. What you would do, let's make a copy again, to calculate this function value would be to take a look at the coefficients that you're dealing with. and just write these coefficients in a sort of table. So I'm going to take this 4 down, so I have a 4, I'm taking this 5 down, it's a 5, and then a 6, and a 7, and an 8. And what I wanted to compute was f of 5, right? This is what I wanted. I wanted to know what f of 5 was. So I'm going to write the 5 here, and now I'm going to add this number with this number. Now this number does not exist, but I'm going to add them anyway. So 4 plus nothing, basically, I get a 4. Now I'm going to multiply these two. And I get a 20 and I write that here. And now I add again. So I get a 25. And now... Oh, sorry, I'm not... No, wait, that was correct. And now I want to multiply again, so I get a 100, 125. and now I add again so I get 131 and now I multiply so that must be 655 probably now I have to add again 662 now 5 times 662 so that would be 3310 and we're going to add the 8 here, and we get 3318. Now let's see if that's the same answer that we got before. We got the answer, oh, 3318. So we see we get the same answer. And we can also see by looking here that we did an addition, and then a multiplication, and then an addition, and then another multiplication, and then another addition, another multiplication. So we basically alternated between adding and multiplying and we did uh, as before we did four additions and four multiplications. So we said before that this was known as Horner's method and Horner's method means you write these coefficients out and you write what it is that you're wanting to know so f of 5 in this case and you draw a line here and you add and you multiply. But what does that have to do with what we did here, right? We factored this x out and said that if we looked at it that way then we would have fewer operations. So let's see if we can figure out what this method of notation has anything to do with this form of the polynomial. So let's write out the coefficients again. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is what we had here, right? So let's write that out. Four. Actually, let's write these quite a bit uh, apart from each other, so I have some rooms. 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8. And we're wanting to compute something like f of 5, right? But instead of a f of 5, let's say I don't want to know f of 5, I want to know what f of x is. So I'm actually going to put an x here. So if I add here 4 plus nothing, I get 4. Now I multiply these two, I get 4x. Now I add these again, so I get 4x plus 5. Now I multiply again, so that gives me x times 4x plus 5. And then I add again, so x times 4x plus 5 plus 6. Now I multiply again, so I end up with x times x times 4x plus 5 
plus 6. And then I have to add again, so I have x times x times 4x plus 5 plus 6, and then I add my 7 plus 7. You can see where this is going. Now I have to multiply it one more time, so I get x times x times x times 4x plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, and now I have to add one more time. I'm going to write that out over here. What I get is x times x times x times 4x plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. Sorry, I had forgotten one parenthesis here. And then plus 8. So that's what we get using Horner's method. And if we look back, that is exactly what we had computed before. And as we saw before, that is what f of x was equal to. So it turns out that Horner's method is just doing what we had seen here when we factored out these x's. So, now you are allowed to believe me that there is a better method of computing a function value and using this method, known as Horner's method, you can compute that function value using only n additions and n multiplications, where n is the degree of your fact of your uh, polynomial f, and it can be proved that this is optimal. So this is the minimum number of operations that you have to do in order to compute the function value of a polynomial.